Hi all, Mass Barn Cup from Kaiser Power Electronics here. Today we're taking a look at this Serio 10,000P solar inverter. Now this is extremely heavy and it also states that it exceeds 60 degrees Celsius surface temperatures when running full load. And it just sounds uh, mysterious and being so heavy for a 10 kilowatt unit. So let's get that torn apart and check out why. The Serio 1000P specifications. We we'll see it's rated for a uh, 640 volt DC solar panel uh, voltage, but can use between 200 to 800 and a 13 amp string input current. It is made for 400 volt three phased connection, and we have a uh, 10,000 watt nominal load, and it can do peak of 11 kilowatt. And that corresponds to 19.3 amp three-phased AC. Rated for minus 20 to 55 degrees Celsius um, sur surrounding temperature, as this is IP65, meant for being installed on outside. And as for the warning that's up here, we can see case temperature may exceed 60 degrees Celsius, do not touch. That's pretty interesting for something being mounted um, yeah, within range of kits and animals. The front of the unit features a, uh, yeah, what seems like a special display or mini display. We have up, down, enter and to the side buttons. We have a RS-232 serial interface and a USB port. At the bottom of the unit we have our three-phased input. We have three fans going into an air tunnel all through the unit. It has a back plate, so it's a enclosed uh, loop there. We have the three string connections to the solar arrays. We have what seems like some kind of expansion slot with a uh, connector deep inside. And maybe another USB port or serial port here at the bottom. The chassis out here is just mounted with six screws, so that comes off uh, easily. And only to reveal another plate. So yeah, this is part of the whole IP65 rating that it's actually enclosed in a, what probably has a gasket of some sort all around this. And we have all our inductors sitting over here. So uh, that's actually uh, quite clever to get those out of the way. Luckily that wasn't too bad. Whoa! That is a complete surprise. What a nice layout. And it's so clean. I mean, the state of this on the outside, I did not expect it to be this nice. Just look at those rows here, three legs. How the, it's all modular build up with control boards sitting here, a lot of uh, smaller boards going down there. Housekeeping power supplies sitting over here. Some kind of driving circuits also sticking out. Seems like a very modular system really. A quick uh, run through of this is of course that we have our solar inputs down here. So uh, a lot of uh, protection here from, uh, and that is because solar arrays are of course are exposed to the elements, which also includes uh, lightning. So you have a lot of uh, lightning arresters and uh, capacitors, morphs, etc. sitting here on the input, which also uh, has a uh, decoupling over to the main filter, which has three large green capacitors. We have our common mode noise inductor here, three-phased, and from here on it dives in under the control board and it's not hard to guess where our DC link is. And then of course we have our switches up here. So I'll say let's get this completely stripped down and look a bit closer on the power electronics underneath here. Most of the control cables are now out of the way and uh, on the sticker here you can see it says uh, Master and Slave and it says 10th of July 2010. So a good 13 year old, very far from being out of service. So clearly this must, must have failed in some sort of way or just some kind of upgrade, I don't know. 
uh, but it does uh, have some internal damages here. Um, broken standoffs. Whoa! More IGBTs! That wasn't even everything. We also have another three legs over here. Of course, we have the uh, we have the first uh, inverter for, from the solar panel down to our DC bus, and we have the uh, output inverter, of course. A lot of nice big switches. This, those, um, oh, is it 264, something like that, max packages? Not your common 247. But the large version of those, very nice and fast diode sitting here. Oh, how nice. As for the uh, controller here, it seems to have ah, this uh, kind of uh, little ceramic heatsink glued on. So it's and it's formally formal formal coating. As we can see here, it's uh, all uh, reflecting the light. So yeah, pretty hard to get something uh, torn apart here without uh, damaging everything. All of the switches we have up here, all twelve of them. Those are Fairchild FGL 40N120, which means that's 1200 volt DC 40 amp rated IDBTs. Very nice. We have 12 of those here. And then if we just zoom back down to the other part of the board, well, we have another six here, along with three ultra fast diodes, which is also Fairchild. I think it's what something like RHRG. 7520 so most likely 1200 volt uh, rated again with 75 amps these are sitting on some extruded aluminum blocks all the way around to uh, yeah get it up from the base plate or the base heatsink but we also have a lot of stuff going on underneath here so uh, i think that we'll uh, have to um, yeah get all the power electronics out right now and then we can take a peek underneath And it seems like it's uh, completely free. So many screws in the middle of the board. That's it's really sturdy made. Just have the last few cables in the back here. Let's get those out. But look at that PCB design. Really, that is freaking huge. And a lot of uh, reinforced uh, PCB tracks here at the back side. But really, what a board! So clearly something is hiding underneath this uh, piece of plastic. And we also have some kind of metal plate here. But the output legs up here, we have a, a three red wires going out to the chokes. So that's our output chokes. And along with uh, two, um, yeah, maybe a DC link. Um, but that goes underneath the metal plate out to the uh, three-phased mains connector here. And that's actually everything, or you know, that doesn't connect up here. So those uh, few screws, let's just get those away quickly. Oh, by the way, before we remove that, look, look at those. Those are actually a full ceramic plate for uh, insulation between uh, yeah, the, the heatsink and the switches. Uh, and that is of course uh, to insulate between the um, leg that goes to the back of the package. So you don't short circuit all your transistors, but that's a nice piece of ceramic. Oh well, we were at this plate. Wow, what a filter! So the other filter, that was not the mains filter, that was just the solar ray filter. I mean, look at that. I thought this was a combined filter, but this is actually just for 10 kilowatt of solar peak. But over here we have our mains filter. Wow. Seems like we have some kind of a current uh, transducer here at the... Oh, that's a fault current detection, because we have all four wires going through a single current transformer, all three wires. So that's just looking for an uneven distribution. 
uh, between the phases. We have uh, fuses, we have uh, morphs, we have capacitors, resistors. Again, we have two filters, so maybe um, maybe we have a common common mode noise, and we have uh, to earth as well. Yeah, we have a big earth wire going here, and the DC bus goes over here to a lot of different sized capacitors. So some kind of decoupling board from the DC bus to uh, Earth as well. And up here we seem to have uh, relays, smaller contactors. We have three large ones up here and then we have six smaller ones. So that is perhaps the only thing switching between being on and off to the mains uh, connection. Is that just a current transformer? Ah. Uh, those three black ones all the way up here, that's current transformers, and then we have six relays here, two and two in parallel. That's also a way to get a higher current rating. Nice little detail that we could check out on the inductors, which were sitting out here in a row of six. They are aluminum metal house, cast aluminum, and they also have a small, uh, yeah, of these heat sink, um, it's not heat sink paste, but it's some kind of uh, medium to, uh, yeah, transfer heat and it's mounted on its own uh, little heat sink out there on the side so uh, yeah a very um, load loaded unit that has a lot of heat to dissipate sits on its own heat sink so overall this seems like a pretty neat design and i actually think that i'm going to keep the whole heat sink with these extruded or extruded these um, extenders because um, what I had here was actually 12, 6, 18 switches and making a full bridge of that, that is 9, 4 and a half, that doesn't work out. So let's just say that's uh, 16 switches, so we have 4 switches in parallel for each like. That can be set up for some kind of uh, yeah, multi-transistor inverter like a QCV Tesla coil. That is a perfect base for that. There is even a router in gasket all around the heatsink to make it yeah, watertight up against the cabinet. The amount of details and engineering and machining and building that went into this unit also tells a tale why this is beat off the market and it's not a product that we see anymore. This is simply built too expensive. It's been pressed out of the market by the cheaper units that I have also torn down, which is just single whole unit cast um, pieces of uh, aluminum press fit together and this is just a whole other level of quality and engineering so that's why we see something like this get thrown out doesn't seem like there has been any failures no scorch marks no exploded devices so hopefully all the idbt switches are just fine and can be reused into a project maybe even as it is it's simply a matter of just cutting up the PCB here, remain the uh, DC bus, all the legs are already in place, remove all the drive circuitry, and off we go. So, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked this video, please subscribe to my channel, and if you really liked it, share this video with your friends. And until next time, see ya!